Welcome to another edition of Jet Setting. Paul Friesen here, the Winnipeg Sun, joined by Scott Billick of the Winnipeg Sun. And Scott, um, let's start with uh, with what the Jets have given up lately, especially the last two games against the Leafs. Uh, I, I would say the Leafs exposed them a little bit for uh, for what we kind of suspected they are, a team that gives up too much. And boy, did Toronto take advantage, although the Jets got a split. Um, I understand you're touching on this uh, for your column for Saturday's paper. What, what's the theme? Yeah, I mean, I think exposed is probably the right word. I, I, I would, you know, it, it's interesting you talk about it being exposed and, and, and they've still, you know, taken three points out of four, you know, three of possible four points out of these two games, which I, I think that, that's kind of the weird part about the Jets. They, <laughs> they're... They're a good team because their record is 16, 18, and two right now. They're tied for second place as of uh, you know as of Friday night here um, in, in in the in the North Division, and, and yet you know they, they give up so many of these kind of uh, high danger chances, uh, slot shots, uh, uh, you know, for lack of a, a better term there, um, and when you give up 18 of them in a game. Um, you kind of expect what happened last night to happen at least more. I wouldn't, you know, you, you, the problem is you can't count Connor Hellbuck or the Jets out because they have Connor Hellbuck, right? I mean, right. I, I, I was talking to somebody, an agent uh, last night while I was watching the game and he was making the point that, um, you know, Connor Hellbuck is, you know, the Jets had something like three expected goals against last night, but, you know, how many saves did Connor Hellbuck make last night that should have been goals that weren't, right? I mean, maybe seven or eight at, 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 at times, um, just with, with how many ridiculous saves he made. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, you know, they, they, they get exposed and then kind of their goaltending kind of keeps them afloat. And, and so it, it doesn't always seem like as big of an issue as it probably should be. And, and you know, it, it's interesting. You look back at that Montreal game where they lost 7 1, you know, they gave up. 10 only 10 high danger chances but got scored on four of them and and so you know you look at Connor Hellbuck's save percentage last night in, in high danger situations it was like 909 which is very good um you know given those shots in, in the game previous against Toronto was like 930 uh, in those chances and then the game against Montreal it was like 500 you know 550 something like that so it, it you know you're really depending a lot on your goaltender to kind of save yourself you know save your, yep. your your inadequacies defensively and I think that's you know Paul Maurice talked about it on, on Friday morning a little bit about uh, you know this this it's not the holy grail right this isn't you know what it is gonna I, I don't know maybe if he suggested that you know if they're gonna sink or swim you know based on this but it is a big deal in, in my mind because if you continually you know, it's just like the, you know, the laws of averages or probability or whatever, the more you give up, the more chances that these, uh, these, these pucks are going to find the back of the net. Now, Paul Marie says this team is, is improving and it is a focus for this team. Um, uh, I would suggest they have improved a little bit. I don't know if it's, it's to a point where it's not really to a point yet where you can call them a good defensive team. They just get really bailed out by their goalies all the time. So, yeah. Well, they didn't improve yeah. from, they didn't improve from game one to game two against Toronto. And that was their whole focus was we got to cut down yeah. some of that. Stuff. And, 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 and the thing is like Toronto is a good team, right? I mean, you know, that's that, the other we, thing. We Toronto's going to expose, Toronto right. exposes a lot of teams. And, and, and they did. I mean, they just, I and mean, Paul Maurice admitted it on Friday morning. You know, they played an outstanding game was his, his, his quote, and, and he's not lying, right? Like, yeah. Toronto played a hell of a game. They should have scored more goals than they did. Um, but, that's who you, but that's who Winnipeg has to measure itself against because that's, let's face it, the goal is going all the way, and they're, they stand in the way. They're, that's going to be their number yeah. one threat in the playoffs uh, if, if they get there. And so yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, stacking yourself up against comparing yourself to one of the top teams in the league when they're in your division and they're going to be a playoff opponent. That's who the Jets have to match up with. Yeah. And, and uh, based on those two games, they got a ways to go. Except the fact that they took three out of four points, which, yes. which is and, weird, right? And, like, yeah. will yeah. that be sustainable come playoff time if they have to meet the Leafs 
you know, in, sure, in a hot goalie can ride you. Yeah. But exactly, right? I mean, the Jets yeah. know all that all too well when it comes to Marc Andre yeah. Fleury to, a few years ago. But yeah, it, it's if they can reprove their defense between now and when they would eventually play the Leafs, if they do, they're in a yeah. lot better spot because they have such lethality of their own up front. And, yeah. and you saw that last night. I mean, the Jets don't generate a lot of high danger chances of their own, but their shooting percentage is 25% on those shots all season. And that's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the best in the league, right? It is. Yeah. Second, I believe second best in the league. And, yeah, and that's so your column as well for Saturday. I found it interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, the Jets are very opportunistic and, and, and they take advantage. Well, I mean, I'm saying the same thing here, but they take advantage very well of the opportunities that they're given. They just don't generate a lot of them. And part of that problem, I think, and I've banged this drum now for since last year, is they, they've, they've, they've tried to focus so much on defense, team defense, that, that they sacrifice offense doing it. The, the one good thing that they have, and even without Patrick Line anymore, is their shooting percentage is really good. They have guys like Nikolai Ehlers, and we saw that against uh, against Toronto on Thursday. Just, I mean, just a snipe fest for him. He's just a very good player, and they have really good shooters on that team. And so, again, yeah. if they could just be better defensively, they would just be a better hockey team because they would they could spend more time playing offense. And it's not like they're pretending that doesn't exist. Paul has told us, right. Paul Maurice has told us many times that that's going to be what we work on all season long. Now, we didn't plan to talk about this, but I'll ask you this anyway. <laughs> if it takes you off guard, too bad. Uh, can they improve that defense before the trade deadline? Is that you think that's even on the burner? I the I trade. Mean, I mean, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, uh, can they before the trade deadline? Maybe. I mean, uh, to me, I, I think if they uh, and I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I think if you put Dylan DeMello with Josh Morris. You're going to have a defensive, a better defensive core. Um, you know that said, I, I don't know. I you mean, don't expect a trade. Oh, do I expect a trade? Yeah, I do. You yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. if you think that this team is going to go somewhere this year, and, and given their record, and given where they sit in the division, where t- other teams sit kind of behind them, they're in a pretty good spot here to play in the to play in the postseason and. It's just going to, it's a very weird, going to be a very weird playoffs, just given kind of how, you know, you're basically going to be playing Canadian teams all the way up to the, the conference finals, essentially. Um, I, I think they've proven that they can beat the Leafs. And, and so if you can beat the Leafs as, and, and in games where your, your, your defense is as porous as it has been, can you improve that with a Matthias Ekholm, a David Savard, a, somebody like that and, and, and make your defense better and, and then actually have a legitimate chance of beating, you know, Toronto over a seven game series. I, I think you can. Um, so I, I think you, uh, a month from now, uh, I okay. want to say March, uh, the date evades me, but it, it's about a month, from, not March, April. April. Um, yeah. But yeah. And so, yeah, like, I think they are going to look for that. I, I think they should make a deal. I, I just think it, you got to make sure it's cost effective. Right. There's a difference sure. between David Sabard, which would be a true rental, and, and a Matthias, uh, Matthias Ekholm, who has one year left on his contract. But both of those mm-hmm. deals are going to include different asking prices. Um, and so you kind of have to make sure that you're not also, you know, I, I think, and, and we're getting kind of off point here, but like, what, what is a yeah. draft pick worth this year? I mean, if you look at the OHL, they're, mm-hmm. they're not really playing. The WHL is just about to start. I think they're starting today, really, uh, on Friday. They're going to play. Um, but I mean, this, this whole year, it has kind of, for lack of, ruined a bit of a development curve for a lot of players, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. what is a first round draft pick worth this year? Is, is it worth that much? You know, yeah. you got, you're going to be drafting a player in July who, who may, if he's in the OHL, hasn't played a game yet and, and, and this season. Mm-hmm. So and the other trade issue is quarantining a new player, of course. Yeah, well, I, well, and, you know, if, if, I, I think the the NHL is trying to petition the feds to, to, to at least been trying for a while though. I know, but when you get to trade deadlines, a little different because the movement's different. We've had only a few trades this year, you know, with Canadian teams. And, and obviously the big one, obviously was Pierre Luc Dubois who had to sit 14 days in quarantine. I mean, you've had other guys like Eric Comrie who had to come back up and do it. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I think, you know, I think the NHL is going to do its darnest to try and, Get some sort of modified clause, seven-day thing uh, that they had during 
during the summer. But yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. But I, I still don't know if that's going to really affect teams as much. I mean, it sucks that you're not going to be able to use your player for two weeks. But at the same time, I mean, you're probably well positioned. Well, at least the Jets are at the, at the moment to not really have to worry about that just yet. And, but you would like, I guess, to also get some reps in with his new team, right? And, and a player not playing for two weeks is a is a tough thing. It, 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 it's not helpful right now. So, yeah, I think I mean, there's... If that, if that quarantine doesn't change to me, that, that almost makes the trade deadline a non-event. I don't think it'd be team. nearly as busy, or at least you'll be having Canadian teams dumping players off into American teams where it's a little different, right? I mean, yeah, or, or teams within their... <laughs> you know, with the teams up north here kind of trading amongst themselves, but who knows what that looks like, right? I mean, oh, I'd have five yeah. teams still vying for playoff spots at that point. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, let's just touch on um, what what we look for on Saturday in the third game of this series here. Um, first of all, did uh, Paul Maurice say who's going to be his goalie? He did not yet, no. Uh, we'll find that out tomorrow morning. Think- I, I think Connor Halvick goes back in that. I mean, he's played three ga- two games now very well. Uh, yeah. Why fix something that isn't broken at this point? And plus, well, they've I done just, that before, though. Yeah, but you could you could go with Laurent Brassois in Montreal on Monday, and then play, and then he's going to play. He Laurent Brassois might play two times next week, depending on how they do yeah. it. You know, so I, I don't think you need to play yeah, him back to back night. Yeah, they're, they're, he'll play for sure one time next week. And you might even see him on Monday if they want to give Hellbuck a rest from Saturday to Wednesday and then have right. Hellbuck play. So we'll see what goes on there. It, it's it, it, it's really going to be a busy season coming up here for the Jets schedule-wise yeah. um, with with a bunch of, you know, games to end the month here. So, but I think... Probably no Hellbuck. reason Probably no reason Hellbuck can't do every other day for a while, you know, as long as that no. goes here until the back-to-back. Yeah, I, I think you just want to keep him fresh for the playoffs too. I don't know what that looks like this year. It's a different. Right? He's not going to play a sixty plus games this year. You know, yeah. he's going to play probably forty something, forty five, maybe forty three, um, yeah. by the end of it. And so, I mean, it, it's a different year. I, I don't know if you need to rest him. I, I don't know what that looks like. Expect any lineup changes for Saturday? No, I, I don't think so. I mean. Uh, I, uh, no, I, I no, I don't. I, I think you probably go with what you had um, on 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 Thursday and 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 go from there. Uh, you know, with with Nathan Boldy out, I guess you could put Sam Niku in, but I think they like Logan Stanley, and Logan Stanley played well in his limited minutes on on Thursday night. So um, there's no there's no sense to me in in taking Logan Stanley out. I, I didn't think he should have came out to begin with. We should probably assume they won't give up three clear cut breakaways again. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know if you can ever but, assume that. But, but can they cut down on this on these slot high danger chances uh, against this Leafs team, or is the Leafs just that kind of team? It's a, it's a, they're a tough team to play against, and I think the other thing that Jets are going to have to ward off here is you know it's the last game of a road trip, you know, and, and that always Paul Maurice has talked about this a lot of times, right? I mean, you kind of hope that your your team doesn't you know essentially crap the bed in the last yeah, game, knowing right. you're going home, but we'll see. I think the Jets are going to be motivated to to come out and take five points off of off of Toronto. I mean, cut into their lead, um, cut into their lead at the top of the division. Do I think they're going to win? I don't know if they if they put up the same performance. I, I don't think you can expect Connor Hellbuck to do exactly what he did on Thursday night again. Um, but if you can give him a little more help, I think he can make more than enough saves to help you win again. Um, I just don't know if you can expect him to make these ten bellers all the time. I think that's part of the issue i don't I mean, think you can no can. no at least not in a sustainable way but I, I think the jets have a chance on saturday i mean uh, it, it the leafs aren't they're not a fragile team obviously but they're a team that the jets can they play they can play well against and and and, and i think you kind of saw it i mean even i don't know if, if they I don't know if they kind of stymied Toronto a little bit, but like, you know, when, they, when, 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 when Winnipeg scored a goal on, on Thursday night after kind of getting outplayed quite a bit, that, that, that's a, that was a, t- a tough thing for Toronto. They, they eventually overcame it. They have a lot of veteran mm-hmm. presence there with Joe Thornton and Jason Spetz. A lot of guys have been through it, um, but, but they were able to, and when they were physical against that team, I mean, if you, you can piss off Austin Matthews, and stuff like that, get him off his game. I think that's what they need to do in this game. But uh, yeah, I, I think I think they have a chance. They're not a very think, physical team, though. The Jets. I, I know they that's part of the problem, right? I mean, that's the other mm-hmm. thing. You, you can't just go in there and rough them up and 
and, and Toronto, to, to their credit, they got some big boys too. So, I mean, that's sure. part of it too. But yeah, I, I think they have a chance and I think they, you know, they go back out and I, can they limit the shots? I don't know. I mean, it's what, 17 and 18 now, respectively, over the last two games. So, um, High danger. yeah, I, I think you just have to limit the highest of danger ones, some of the, the Mitch Marner goal and, and that sort of thing, which is difficult, but it's something you got to do against a Toronto team and it's best to learn now. Yeah. All right. I think we've covered enough. Let you get back to work. <laughs> you too. Well, this is work. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You've been watching Jet Setting. Thanks for checking us out, uh, Paul Friesen and Scott Billick. WinnipegSun.com.